This is part one of my story of how I went from being a broke as fuck mom of four kids under five to being a multi-million dollar business owner in 19 months. I have no college degree. My high school education was extremely subpar. I had no training, no understanding of marketing or business really at all. I was completely ill-equipped, which makes me the perfect one to tell this story. So at this time of my life, I was married and we had four kids. They were all born in about five and a half years. The reality of our situation was extremely grim. We had done okay. Um, We had definitely gone through some really hard times, but everything was okay until it wasn't. There were cutbacks um, um, on hours and overtime, which is how we survived. Like we survived on my husband's overtime hours. And so that was a huge hit to us. We suffered and struggled for years. We had cars repossessed. We were kicked out of the houses that we rented. It was just really embarrassing, really bad. We would like, you know, be having a birthday party for our kid with friends. And then like the lights would shut off because we couldn't pay our bills. Like There were just signs everywhere and everyone just kind of pretended like it was fine to maybe like make us feel better, I guess. But it was really, really bad, really dark. I remember standing in Target with a baby on me and the little swaddler thing, a kid in the cart and a kid standing on the floor holding on to the cart and trying to choose between buying tampons and toothpaste because I could not get both. Things just got really bad. And then then my husband got offered a job within the same company he already worked for. It was a really, really large company that did like internet and, you know, phones and installations and stuff like that. And he got an offer to move to Northwest Arkansas. Um, We are from Southern California, born and raised. And so that was a really big move. But the job sounded really great. It was like good hours and, you know, consistent overtime availability, better pay, lower cost of living, like everything just sounded really great. So we took it and broke our own hearts and our family's hearts by announcing that we were leaving, but that we just couldn't cut it in SoCal and we needed to try something else and start over. So at this time, I had a blog. Um, It was really more of a hobby. I didn't know this at the time, but I just did not feel worthy of charging for anything. I just, you know, I'm a writer. I'm a creator. I have a lot of creative energy. So I was putting it into this like motherhood lifestyle blog. I also come from a very religious background. And so I was very unsure about like making money as a woman. And like, I just had no confidence at all or like self-worth of any kind. I blog about like motherhood and um, faith and, you know, I'm not religious at all now, but blogged about different things. And one of the things that I talked about a lot on my blog was this idea of simplifying and how I had been really depressed as a mom and just like didn't want to be a mom anymore. I felt like I was falling so short. I was so overwhelmed. All I did was like clean up messes, make snacks, wipe boogers and butts. And like, I just was not feeling fulfilled by motherhood and felt bad about that. And I had realized that just so much of what I was doing all day, every day was just cleaning up unnecessary messes. And that was literally pulling me away from like why I was home with my kids and like being with them and enjoying this time. So I was sharing that and that was really resonating. And I was growing a very small, but very loyal following, um, talking about things like that. So we do the move to Arkansas right away. I just hated it. I really tried to be positive. It was beautiful. Like the scenery and the nature was beautiful, but we had like one friend that lived an hour from where we were. We didn't have like close friends and family. It was very lonely. It wasn't good for my mental health. Also, once we got there, the company basically was just like, oh, actually, we don't have the availability for all this overtime. We don't really do overtime anymore. So, there's that. Also, the pay was lower. Like, I don't, we were just so young and so dumb. Like, there should have been a contract of some kind. Like, there was nothing. We were just basically lied to. And we moved our four kids and ourselves, all we sold everything, went and started over, got like a little condo and started over. We were like so hoping that things would get better. And everything, like, not only wasn't better, it was worse than it was when we were in California. The weather was so different for us. It does get cold to me there. I remember getting like around 19 degrees. It was 
cloudy a lot. Like my mental health was already in the trash. Now it was just like in the dumpster set on fucking fire. Like I was not doing good. I was trying to make friends. I started like an in-person moms group. I was still blogging. I was actually blogging more. It was a really good outlet for me and my audience was, you know, growing. And then like, it was so small, but it was growing. I just was really wanting out of this situation. My husband at the time was just like gone, trying to make ends meet, trying to sell like what little furniture and items we had brought with us from Cali to like, make money, pay bills. We ended up pawning my engagement ring for like $160. We were not able to get it back ever just to like get food. Like things were just really, really dark. I had started having all these ideas, like business ideas, things that I could do. It was almost like I didn't know the details. I didn't know the how, but I was just having all these ideas and like dreams and like pictures in my head of like, I can do something online. Like there are people listening to me. I know I have something to say. I'm helping people. I'm getting all these really positive comments that I'm helping moms, you know, their lives are getting better. And I don't know. I just, I felt like a sense of purpose in my little blog. And I knew there was something I could do with that, but I was so in my suppression era. I was suppressing my ideas. I was suppressing my desires. I was suppressing business thoughts that I was having and just like, dismissing it and dismissing myself like well there's no way that I could do that flash forward to um January the January after we had moved to Arkansas so we'd been there for several months and was just it was just not going well I was inside the condo with the kids they were all super little like my baby was one and then my daughter was like five and a half six um or like about to turn six I think the kids were going ballistic. Like we, it had been like cold. It was obviously winter and we had just been inside for so many days in a row. Um, we were like eating cereal and beans and rice. Like things were so bad. It, I just was like, I'm used to, you know, being in Cali and being able to just go outside and go to the park whenever. And so I was just like, you know what? Like we need to do that. We need to get outside. So I bundled everybody up. I took the kids just like across the street to the park. Nobody else was there because it was January in the mountains of Arkansas. And my son went, my oldest son went up the stairs and was like, I'm going to go down the slide. And I'm standing at the bottom of the slide to catch him. He goes down the slide and fucking like icicles shoot out from under him and like hurt his back and he's like crying and it's frigid and we're out in the middle of nowhere and like everything sucks and there's no money and i like lost my shit like that was my breaking point i started crying and just in my head like cried out to like god like higher power what in the fuck are you doing? Are you seeing this? Like, this can't go on. Like, I need help. This has to change, like, now. So, had slide gate, icicle gate happen, and it's just this massive breaking point. Like, just realizing that literally this is my life, and it can't be. I don't want it to be. I am extremely unhappy. I am lost. What? Like, this is not why I'm here. This is not an abundant life. Like, no. And just crying out for help. And that day, I didn't have any how. I didn't have any plan. I wasn't even really thinking much about my blog or anything. I just knew that I had to do something. Like, I had to be the one to do something and figure shit out and, like, get my family out of this situation because shit just was not working. So like I said, I did have my blog. I had a very, very small following, like maybe a few hundred people. They were all really loyal, though. They were all moms. And um, I would talk a lot about like faith because that was my vibe at the time. Um, I grew up very Christian. So I would talk about that and I would talk a lot about home and simplifying and how simplifying my life, simplifying our home, getting rid of clutter and not having so much to maintain, not having so much um, to clean up and do and like housework to do with four kids under five totally changed my life and made things so much easier, really um, improved my mental health because it wasn't, while it wasn't perfect at the time due to the circumstances, um, my life was just more manageable. Like I was a stay at home mom. That's what made sense for us at the time because I couldn't, we couldn't afford childcare even if I went and worked. Like I'm sure many of you understand that cycle, that predicament. I was just 
that's what I, those are the kinds of things that I talked, I talked about. But I had really picked up like some good traction on this little blog by talking about minimalism and simplicity and decluttering and how to get your house like totally streamlined and just easier to manage because moms are carrying this burden. There's a big mental load. There's a big physical load. And so I talked a lot about that and that always went over really well. So I had been blogging about that topic for years. I had tons and tons of blog posts on that topic, how to declutter your entire house really quickly, how to declutter out of your house when you you know are afraid you're gonna have to buy things again and you're broke like I was and you know can't do that how to declutter your entire house when you have little kids in the house what if you need something later you know blah 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 that was like my niche I didn't really plan that or try or even really know that at the time but it was so after that day at the park I came home and I remember sitting on our futon this is a futon that we had gotten out of a dumpster and it was like broken in the middle like it dented, dipped down. I remember sitting on there with this like shitty ass Chromebook laptop that I had, um, we had been given actually. And I started researching um, and I found this girl that shared like receipts of how she was making over $70,000 a month in her business like an online business with courses. And I didn't even know what courses were. They were, it was a very new concept at the time. Like pretty much nobody knew what they were. And I just found this fascinating. And I don't, I don't know what exactly happened, but something just clicked. Like something felt really good and really right. Like I felt like I was on to something major. I just, decided that day that I could do this and that I was going to change my family situation with this idea. Maybe not courses because that kind of scared me to like record that and do all of that. Like I was intimidated by that, but I was going to do this with my blog. I was going to do this online. So because I was like too scared of video and making a course and all that, I chose to create an ebook instead. There was an ebook version and there was a physical book that I was going to do through the Amazon self-publishing program. I was so motivated and like on fire for this idea. I worked so damn hard on that book. It was called Mama Needs a Reboot. I actually have a copy of the original. Hold on. Okay, so this is the original book, Mama Needs a Reboot. And the cover, I don't know if you can tell, it's like super pixelated because I wrote this book in less than 30 days. And then my husband and I made the cover with the camera on his work ipad because we had like no camera and really shitty phones um and then the back photo of me like it's all so pixelated and shitty <laughs> um this is taken on a blue wall by a dumpster like by our condo in arkansas um so i wrote my book did everything did the cover shoot set up a big launch teased it everything and it didn't even make enough money to pay like the tiniest bill we had. Like I could barely even go and get myself an ice cream cone <laughs> to celebrate. It just felt like such a kick in the balls. Like not that I know what that feels like, but like a kick in the ute. It was literally the definition of like the wah wah sound. Like it was so embarrassing. I was so discouraged. I remember slamming my laptop shut and like throwing it across the room, which wasn't smart or helpful because, you know, it, I didn't have any money to fix it. So after I had my pity party, I got myself back up and was like, okay, Phoenix rising from the ashes era started. This is when I just started to do more research. I was like, okay, I need to go back to that original idea from that girl I found online and like, just make a fucking course. Like I need to just get over myself and just do this because they're more valuable. It's like higher perceived value. I was like learning all these new things, learning that, learning marketing, learning all of it online. And so since the most popular topic that I talked about on my blog and that got the most feedback, the most shares was growing my small audience was minimalism, decluttering with little kids in the house, you know, the benefits, tips, how to's, all of that. I asked my audience what they would want me to do 
And I said, like, I see that you guys like this topic the best. Like, what would you want from me? If I was going to create something, what would you want? And they said that they would want all of my decluttering and minimalism tips collected together in one place, super easy to go through, super easy to work through, like organized step by step, like exactly what to do instead of like tons and tons of blog posts from over the years, like just randomly on my website. So that was it. I decided I am going to make a course and I learned via Google that pre-selling is a good idea. Like pre-sell the course before you spend time actually making it, make sure they're actually going to follow up with their dollars and that it is a viable idea. So I felt like super smart marketer and decided to do that. And I did a webinar and I did it the broke ass bitch way. Like you have no idea. I used this like weird ass chat that you could embed on a site for free. I got like a free trial of a web platform and used that free page to like put the chat and put embed the code for like my YouTube live that was free. Like I just maneuvered myself into a doing a webinar for my very tiny audience. I actually, if I remember correctly, did a few of these webinars, like all in a row on different days. And in each of them, I pre-sold the idea of my course. I told people it didn't exist yet. It was just an idea. Um, And I think I pre-sold it for $39. And I explained everything I was going to put in it, everything that I was going to explain, all the visuals I was going to include. And even with a super tiny audience and the most ridiculously low price point, which just proves how many how much self-worth issues I had, like $39 for something that was going to take me that much time and be like so extensive, but whatever. I made more than my husband made in a month. That was a big deal for us. He just like worked so hard and was trying so hard to figure things out and make ends meet. And then for me to just do this one thing that didn't even exist yet and make more than he made in a month was just like, okay, I'm really onto something here. I knew that I had this opportunity to take the money that I had just made with these webinars and really go somewhere with this, like really turn this into something. Okay, so the money from all the pre-orders, like all the pre-orders, like there were not that many, but I had made like a few thousand dollars. And so we needed it for stuff, like we needed it for bills and stuff. But my husband at the time was just like, you know what, like I will figure this out. Like I can sell stuff. I'll try to pick up shifts. Like you need to like put this back. There's something here. Like he was super supportive. So it was like, okay, I took the money and I used a chunk of it to fly back home to California and like let him have the rest to like deal with bills and the kids and everything and do some research and groundwork because I did not want to be a fake teacher or a fake leader. I just, I was really starting to see where this could lead. I was really starting to feel like what I wanted to become and see the big picture of like my purpose. I was finally feeling happy, fulfilled. Like I felt like I wasn't alive before this point of my life. I was so lit up and so driven and I just really wanted to do a good job. I really wanted to grow a large audience and really lead women out of like the stereotypical hot mess mom culture, like this, that bullshit vibe that is spoken over us and expected of us. And we're just expected to like do it all and do it all really well and be really happy and like car pay all the DMs. And it's just such bullshit. So I really wanted to become a reputable leader in that space. And at that time, I thought that the main and maybe only way to do, to teach women that and to get them to not be overwhelmed anymore and get them to not be subscribed to that way of living as moms was to have them declutter that I I ended up creating like this whole trademarked method. But at that point, I could only see as far as like the clutter because that had impacted my life so much. And I had seen it impact like my blog readers lives and stuff. So I just really value authenticity. I wanted to be legit. I desired to be truly good at what I did. And I had only really had like my own personal experience. And so I, you know, five years of self-practice, while that's great, it, it wasn't enough for me. I really wanted to help other people with different lifestyles, different um, abilities and disabilities, different families, different homes, different everything, different from me, and test out my 
process and really develop my method so that I had something super solid to teach. So that was really important to me. So I flew back home to Southern California where I knew people that would let me help them. I did like friends of my mom's, friends of myself, people from my church, people like neighbors and stuff. Um, I helped a widow declutter her late husband's things. She was feeling ready but really struggling. Um, A disabled older woman who couldn't do much on her own. A mom of three kids, um, a mom of nine. We did her playroom. Um, A mom who was super broke like myself and really had this fear of like needing something that she wouldn't be able to buy again in the future. Um, Like her poverty was just really ruining her life and keeping her cluttered. So that was a lot of mindset work. And I just, that really opened my eyes and I was just taking notes and writing down like how they were feeling and what words they were using and what ended up working and helping. And like, I just really realized that decluttering is very spiritual and emotional. And it's also very therapeutic if you let it be. So I learned a lot in just like a couple weeks. This also really reignited my passion for this and like not even reignited because it was already ignited as fuck, but it just grew it. Like I saw a lot of themes. Clutter was seriously stealing from people. Like it was stealing their energy and their time. Like it was sucking up their lives. They were having to maintain so much and it was so unnecessary. And like, it was just fucking them up and making their life so much harder. And it was all totally unnecessary. Like it wasn't just me. I finally saw proof that it's not just me. It's like people from all walks of life and different circumstances. It's very normal in our society to have these like big houses full of shit with a garage full of shit you don't even know is there or you or touch or need and then like also be paying for a storage unit or two if it's full of more shit like we just have this like this is normal like what the fuck we just have this massive um wasteful society and it's putting a burden on so many people and there were studies that had been done proving this showing the link between like like women specifically and their stress hormone levels like this was it wasn't just me and my story. Like I was right. That was really fucking with me and really affecting my mental health and keeping me from being the person and the mom that I wanted to be. It was like keeping me at work and just such an unnecessary mental and physical load. And it was happening to other people too. So I felt very validated. I also learned during this trip that a lot of women think that it's like they need to just get organized, like they need to just get bins and label makers or hire a professional organizer. And that is not it at all. That organization is more of like a bandaid over a bullet hole and you really need to pull the problem out at the root. And that is clutter. So I felt very equipped from this trip and just really validated. And I also noticed how drawn I was specifically to helping moms. Um, I wanted to help moms that were where I had been a few years back before I had decluttered my house and made things simpler. Um, So I really narrowed in on them and decided that was going to be my niche. And that was perfect because that was already, um, you know, who was making up my very small audience from my blog. So I flew back home. I took my five years of personal experience, all my blog posts, all my content, all my ideas and my new research from my trip and started creating an outline for a course. But we were running out of money really fast and things were getting worse. There was just there was a lot happening. I had an immense amount of stress. I was having recurring nightmares that were super symbolic and all based around just like the fucking trauma of my life and my circumstances at the time. Um, My baby was, he was one and he just like didn't vibe with slumber. So he was not sleeping. I was still nursing him. Like my other kids, my other three kids were all toddlers. Um, I had multiple kids in diapers. Like it was just expensive and crazy and difficult. Um, all we were eating is basically like Cheerios and beans and rice and like really shitty cheap meat. And I was feeling sick. My body was starting to be affected. Like I just knew like, okay, I have a tight deadline here. Like I need to make this happen fast. So the money was running out fast. There was a lot of pressure. I knew I needed to make this happen quickly. Like I had a lot of work to do. So I ended up writing out a huge, very detailed outline for my course. And I decided to call it Purge Your Entire Home. Maybe it was just like my mental health status at the time. Um... But I just I I apparently thought that having the word purge in the title of your course was a good idea. 
But okay, at this point, I was like, okay, I've got this course mapped out and I was very detailed. Like I wrote out every word I was supposed to say because I was terrified of recording anything and messing up. Um, but I realized at this point that I couldn't just keep using the free Chromebook that somebody had given us. Um, like that's what I had been using and it was so like shitty and didn't have a lot of capacity. I needed a, a laptop that could do things. I needed to film my course on something. I needed to be able to like make slides and run a program to like record myself and all the things. And I basically had no budget. So I went on Craigslist and found a laptop for like 40 bucks, less than 50 bucks for sure. Got it from this really skeevy guy in a parking lot. And I was alive after. So mission super accomplished i had a pair of corded headphones with a super shitty mic and um i started recording the lessons i had no fucking idea what i was doing like zero um i had basically no personality i was talking like a robot i was reading the script and um it was um it was yet another dumpster fire now that I look back at it, but I got it done. So I had promised my pre-order students that I would have the course delivered to them by, you know, a certain date, whatever that was. And so, you know, I had to get to work and just get them that content quickly. So I finished up the course and I signed up for a free trial of a course hosting platform. It was like three months free. So I had three months until, you know, to make money because I could not afford the very low monthly fee for that platform. So another fire lit under my ass at this point. I had like 19 forest fires just lit straight under my ass. Lots of reason to move forward and make this happen. So finished the course, delivered it to my pre-order students, and the feedback was wild. Like they loved it. It was the coolest feeling. They were asking questions, which led to me finding like gaps in the content. And so I would record more lessons to fill those in for them and make sure all their questions were answered. Um, it was just really good. I even did a couple of live calls with some of them um, and got, and I remember giving some of them my phone number and like texting with them. Like I was so wanting to be really good at this. And that was, oh my gosh, like, that is a skill I am so grateful for because it really helped. Like my course was so good. The content was good. The recording and the way I deliver, like I needed a lot of work, but done is better than perfect. That's my motto. So my students were writing to me like every week saying how the course was changing their lives and it was so comprehensive and easy to understand and they loved the layout and the step by step. And this is like the next step they were needing because the blog was so helpful, but this is just way easier for them to take in and like see what to do next because they're already overwhelmed. And like I was doing it and I was feeling so good. I also like on a personal level, not only loved reading these messages from them and seeing that this was going this way and satisfying that need for them and like fulfilling that desired lifestyle for them, but I felt like I had found a huge piece of myself. I don't know if this is going to come off wrong. I honestly don't really care, but I felt like I had not been fulfilled before. Like no one really talks about like when you're just not fulfilled by just being a mom. And I felt so guilty about that, especially like the upbringing that I come from. But I was feeling so fulfilled and I was starting to notice that I was being a better mom to my kids because I was having something else to do and something else to work on. Like I just felt like I was finally alive. I was so happy. At this point, I had a course and I needed to grow my audience so that I had more people to sell it to. I raised the price from $39 to like probably like 50 to 70. I don't know. Still really low, but raised it. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I did it. And I had read online that you need an email list. So I signed up for another free trial of an email marketing platform, like an email sending platform. And I created a freebie. It was like this little PDF ebook thing that people would want in exchange for their name and email. It was like a minimalism starter kit for overwhelmed moms or something like that. I learned how to do all of this and hook everything up on the back end at the good old University of Google. I placed this freebie 
everywhere. I put it on all of the blog posts that were relevant to it on my website, on my blog, which there were a lot because I had been doing this for years, right? Um, I started sending people from Instagram and my Facebook page to the link to the freebie. I started asking my followers to share it with their mom friends and they were. Um, I also shared the freebie in like mommy groups that I was a part of and Facebook groups and like I was just like, here, take this. It's so helpful. Here, here. Like I was becoming a self-promoting queen. My email list was slowly growing. I think I had like a hundred or like something, maybe 200 people on it and I was freaking out. I was eating up every piece of knowledge I could get my hands on. I was on YouTube learning about digital marketing, um, selling courses, everything. I went to like Pinterest webinars to learn like how to put my freebie and make pins that people could find it on Pinterest to grow my email list that way. And that worked like a charm. Um, I would like go to all these webinars to learn but could never buy the courses they were selling at the end even though I wanted them so bad. Um, I borrowed like 300 bucks from my dad and bought a webinar course so I could learn how to do webinars like like the right way, the proper way. And I studied selling, marketing, branding, and I was falling in love with this shit. The problem that I was running into, other than being broke as fuck, um, was that courses were so new that almost nobody had heard about them yet. And everyone, I felt like I was having to convince everybody that I'm not like a scammer and that I'm legit and I can help and change their lives for the better, like getting them to trust me enough to like buy something from like a stranger on the internet. So at this time, guest posting was working really well in the online space. Like that was definitely a popular strategy to get seen and get more eyes on you. So I figured that guest posting on reputable blogs that had a similar audience to me with like a decent following would position me as trustworthy to these people's audiences. Um, Podcasts weren't really a thing yet, so guest posting was the way. But I knew that I was going to need something like really good to say, and I was going to need to say it really well. Like in order for me to feel worthy of taking up space on someone else's you know, hard-earned platform and get in front of their audience um, to be able to deserve their audience's attention and to truly serve that audience and to get that audience to connect with me and want to come over and be a fan of me and my content, I would have to have something really good to say. I thought about what I could say, how I could say it, and I started to obsessively research how to go viral. Now, at this time, random shit didn't just go viral. You couldn't just go viral. What went viral was really good stories. And they were usually in the form of like written articles. So I studied virality and what makes things go viral for weeks. I stayed up late. I woke up at 4 a.m. to like work on my business, create content and study storytelling, study marketing and the wild new concept of going viral. I decided to write this blog post and I worked my ass off on it. It was called How Getting Rid of Our Stuff Saved My Motherhood. And the point of the post was just my motherhood story, my clutter story. Um, I learned how to keep people interested as I told my story. I strategically placed my freebie and links to my course within the article. So I worked really, really hard on this blog post. I studied it. I tweaked it. I rearranged it and studied like how it should be laid out, how to say certain things. And like I said, I littered this article with um, hyperlinks to my new course and um, put my freebie in it like everywhere. Okay. Um, finally, I felt like it was a really strong post and I put intention into that post. Like I just knew it was going to go viral. I felt it in my bones, in my soul and my bones and my soul were like, yeah, bitch. I visualized it going viral and like what it would be like for my post to be the one receiving like those reshares and the comments. Like I saw it in my mind and I just knew. So now that I had an article that slayed, in my opinion, something valuable to say and something valuable to serve and help people, because it wasn't just my story, like it had a lot of heart and I was giving hope to other moms and I was really proud of that. So then I started asking like where I could guest post and I started pitching myself to people. This was terrifying, but my confidence was really starting to grow. I remember I emailed one woman. She was a blogger and she was like my idol at this point in time. Her audience was also moms. Um, 
So I wrote her telling her how much I loved her, how much she had helped me and her content was so amazing um, and just uh, shared what I was working on and was so excited and just begged, like not begged, like desperate, but just like, oh my God, I would love to do this. Here's my article and asked if I could guest post on her blog. She must not have thought that my idea was very good or maybe she just didn't. I don't know, but she regularly took guest posts all the time and she rejected me like really abruptly and kind of broke my heart. Like it was a setback for sure. So rejection that really sucked. And um, yeah, but I had a big goal and I was super done being poor. So I kept going. One day in one of the blogger Facebook groups that I had just been added to, I posted and just said, hey, I'm Allie. This is like what I do, what I talk about. And I would love to guest post on some blogs. Like if if this is your audience, if this is interesting to you, would you please let me know? I have this idea for a post and I kind of said what it was about. Um, Let me know. I would love to talk to you and collaborate. You know, when you're like a blogger, especially if you're like not even big time, but just, you know, you're a regular blogger, you have an audience, like you have a content schedule to keep. So I was positioning myself as like, I want to help fill a slot in your content calendar, like take a load off of you. Um, Here's what I have to say. Like I wasn't sharing the entire article, of course, but I was just letting them know, like, this is what I do, what I'm going to talk about. This is the topic I'm thinking, but I'm open to writing a new article for you. Like just trying to be super helpful for the other person and not just like take. So this woman replied to me. She replied to that post and she said that I could guest post on her blog. Her name was Robin Long and she ran a website called The Balanced Life and she had a decent following. So I was so excited. I had already posted my blog, the blog post that I had worked so hard on, on my own blog. So I was like, well, maybe it will go viral from there. Like I'm not stupid. I put it out there immediately. But then I was like guest pitching the same article to see if anyone else wanted it on their site as well. Um, And I had gone on like a couple other sites, I think, but this one girl was like, okay, this, I just felt good about it. I really liked her. She was really nice to me and her following was decent, like I said. So I, we agreed that I would put this guest post on her blog and she let me know like what kind of time frame it could be published in and all that and we were good to go i did not know that this was going to change both of our lives forever so the blog po- the blog post goes live on Robin's site. It's good. It's getting like positive comments, but nothing really major happened. So it was kind of like, okay. Um, I had put the article on a couple other websites and um, weeks passed, like a couple months went by and nothing really. But the blog had gone live on a couple other websites and was getting positive feedback. Like everywhere it went, I was getting positive feedback and people were asking questions and I was getting new subscribers. I had even submitted this article to Huffington Post and not only got it approved for publishing, but I received an email from Ariana Huffington herself. Like this was such a big deal, especially at that time. Um, Like I was freaking out. So like things were going, I think the Huffington Post thing happened at this point in the timeline. Maybe, maybe I'm mixing up, maybe it happened a little bit later. I don't know, but that happened and it was cool and it's a good part of the story. So I'm telling it, but nothing major was changing about our situation. And I just, I was not giving up on my vision for virality. Um, I just had this strong draw to virality. I had this strong feeling that like it just needed to happen. And I needed like a big search because my family and I were in such a bad situation. I didn't have the time to like slowly grow and slowly gain. I needed this to all happen with a big sudden surge. So I was like decided like that just needs to happen. Um, And I knew that I just needed to get my story in front of massive amounts of people so that a bunch of moms, like more moms could see it and they could help their families and be supported by that. And then, you know, want to work with me, want to buy my course, want to get on my email list and get us out of the situation in exchange for me getting them out of their situation. Like it felt like a really positive energy exchange to me. So I was feeling really good and I was just super committed. One morning during this time, I woke up to the unfortunately familiar sound of a large truck beeping and scraping noises on the concrete. And I looked out the window and they repoed our family van. This was our third car to get repossessed over the years. 
Um, the previous year, I remember the repo guy kicking our garage when we still lived in California, banging on the door, scaring me so bad I was pregnant and hid in the laundry room with my two younger kids. And um, I just hid like and I cried and I had to pretend that we were just playing a game to the kids and that I was fine. Like I was just so fucking done with all this trauma. A few days after they repossessed our van, um, there was an eviction notice put up on our door because we had not paid our condo rent in full for two months and or three months, whatever it takes. It was we were just it was so bad, you guys. Things had just gotten so bad. They were getting worse. Brian didn't have his job anymore. Um, he was making furniture in the garage to make ends meet. Like he was trying to support me starting this blog because I believed in it so much. But like his belief was fading. Mine was not, but I was very, I was struggling. Like I just was so, so done. And so just like, when is this going to hit? We had to go to the food bank one day around this time. And I just remember feeling so low. I remember going for a walk and just crying. Um, I remember just like, I knew somehow we were going to get out of this, but like low point again. The night that we had to go to the food bank, I, my husband and I had a conversation and he talked to me about how maybe this isn't going to work. Maybe we should try something else. Um, maybe I should just get a normal job and we could figure out childcare or try to again, or ask somebody from like the people, you know, the friends we had made to help the kids. And I just like really didn't want someone else with my kids. I didn't trust people. And, um, I don't know. I just, it, it was a, not a good conversation. I felt like he didn't believe in me anymore. And I wondered if I was crazy. And we just felt so stuck. Like we fought really bad that night. Just like the reality. I remember it. Like the reality of so much pain and panic and financial stress on our relationship and on our family. Like the kids were so little and so cute and we were not enjoying this time of our lives at all. Like the lack of money was stealing everything from us. I went to bed that night crying, praying, begging, and eventually like just imagining like, what if this works? What if it really works? What will that even feel like? Literally everything was different when I woke up in the morning. Okay. So went to bed that night a disaster, super hopeless and stressed and upset and woke up the next morning. And as usual, I logged into my email marketing platform because I was obsessed with my email list growth. Wanted to see, you know, if a couple more people had joined while I was asleep and logged into the email platform to see that I had been locked out and like flagged and blocked out. Like I couldn't do anything. What in the fuck? I was freaking out, unhinged to the max. There were notices that my account had been flagged um, as like I was a scammer, um, that I was about to be removed and lose everything, like all the hard work to grow my list, all the writing I had done was like about to be for nothing, like everything was about to be gone. I was trying to fix it, like click, like customer support. Oh my God, what do I do? Like panicking. And then I had also seen like a bunch of PayPal alerts um, on my lock screen. So I was just like, what the fuck now? Like what is happening? So I click over to PayPal to go see what's up there. I open my PayPal account and there was about $25,000 in there. I had barely ever seen $2,500 at one time. It took me a minute to process what I was seeing. I was just like so confused. I think I remember like screaming and my husband like comes running in and like, why, what? And I showed him and he was like, wait, what the? F so I didn't know if there was like, maybe I was getting scammed. Cause like when you're in poverty and you're in a poverty mindset, like you just automatically think that the next shoe is about to drop. It can't be, it's too good to be true. Like this doesn't happen to people like me. So like, this has to be like, something's wrong. Like it's a scam or something. So I'm thinking like, maybe I got hacked. Somebody's like, I don't know. They gave me the money to try to get information for me or like then they're going to take it away or steal my identity or I don't know. I was just like, this isn't real. So I'm like, well, I'm just really hyper-focused right now on my email list. So let's just 
leave the money for a second because I don't know what's going on. I'm afraid to do anything with it. And let's start, we started like chatting with PayPal's customer service. And while we did that, they, the email platform had told me to reach out to them. So I'm chatting with them via email and they're like, well, it's a, it's, you know, you're a spammer, it's a scam or whatever. Like we have to like block you. And I was like, no, I'm not, I promise. And I forget what they asked me for, but I had to like prove that I was real. And I explained everything to them. And, um, I was like, well, where is all this coming from? Like, where are people coming to my list from? And they sent me the link. And it was the guest post on Robin Long's blog. While I'm talking to them and figuring this out, I get a message from Robin and she's just like, oh my God, Ali, your article is going, it's gone viral. Like it's literally everywhere. There's so much traffic to the site. I think it like crashed or I need to like ask her, I forget what happened, but she was like, she was back in California freaking out about what was going on on her site. And it was like blowing her up too, because it was on her platform. So I confirm with my email service that I am in fact not a spammer. I confirm everything and they give me back my email list. When I get it back, there are 15,000 and something subscribers on it. I had had like, I had just hit a thousand. I had just, I have a picture of myself holding up my laptop with a thousand subscribers on it. Like I was so proud over 15,000 and over $25,000 in PayPal. PayPal confirmed you're good to go. This is the money that you made. Here's what it's coming from. It was all from course sales, like overnight. This is one of my best memories. Um, After these phone calls, this customer service chat, the emails and everything, realizing that this was real, my husband and I went into the living room we, the kids were awake. They were all super little. We had no furniture in our house. Okay. Like actually we had sold everything. And one time we were out all day, like doing stuff with the kids and our landlord had driven by cause we were like a little late on rent, of course. And he looked in the window and saw no furniture and called my husband, like cussing him out and freaking out and saying that like, come get like the couple of things left. Like you pieces of shit, you are skipping out on rent and you just left. Like he thought we left because the house was so empty because we were so poor. We had sold our couch. Like there was nothing to sit on. We sold everything. Like he literally thought we left. That's like how poor we were. So after all this money and everything, the realization, like we're standing in that empty ass living room and we just started screaming like in joy and jumping around and dancing and the kids just were like super into it and started doing it too i remember that moment like in fucking slow-mo it was amazing we got ready and we went out to breakfast and we ordered whatever we wanted my PayPal card not only went through and worked like we had been declined at McDonald's the day before for like the dollar menu. So we were not used to that. It it went through and then we went across the street to Old Navy and I spent over five hundred dollars on clothes for all four of the kids and new shoes. We went to Payless and we got my son Hudson these light up Batman shoes because he was obsessed with Batman. I got them everything they had been needing. We went and stocked up on groceries like I will I will never forget that day. I called friends and family like everybody of course was like, "Oh, congrats. Like that's amazing. Wow." But like low key like how are you going to keep this going? Is this real? It's just a fluke. Like what happens when it's not viral anymore, you know? And and honestly, I was thinking that too. This article stayed viral for so long and it was the number one trending like everywhere it was trending on twitter above the first hillary trump debate in 2016. there were reporters reaching out to us showing up at our door wanting to interview us um we did like the today show or good morning america i think it was good morning america and my kid like fell asleep on me and was drooling and snoring during that interview I was on the Jenny McCarthy radio show. I was interviewed in Canada and and Australia and all over the US. My story was everywhere. Everybody was talking about it. I was accepted um, on guest posts everywhere. Maybe this is when the Ariana Huffington thing happened. I, I don't remember. 
It was everywhere. It was crazy. It was so good, so fun, kind of scary, lots of negativity um, when you're viral, but I needed to be prepped for that. I needed to learn that lesson because it's, you know, serves me till this day. We immediately decided to leave Arkansas and go back home. We actually were on a drive one Sunday and we saw a camper on the side of the road for sale. We pulled over, talked to the family, ended up buying it cash for like $5,000 or something. They gave us like a really good deal. And we renovated it, made it super cute inside, like mint green cabinets and black and white everything, and sold all the whatever was left of our shit and toured the US with the kids and the dog and the cat for like nine or 10 months. Like we lived on the beach in our camper. I continued to do webinars. I continued to grow my brand and my business. Um, I started doing interviews on like podcasts and radio shows. I started my own podcast. Like it, it just was crazy. It went from, it went from there. And then my job at this point was to continue it and to, understand how to maintain this momentum and continue to serve people and communicate to my audience and hold their attention, you know, long after the virality. I'm eight years in now, so I definitely did that. 